Yeah. I have some stuff. Uh, I guess I'll just talk about what I've been working on, and then I could get to Loam. Because I do want to talk about, like, all of it. Sure. So, specifically versus Gumi, this is the other match. Um, I realized that I have not beaten Samus in tournament in a long time. And when I do beat a Samus, it's uh, the Samus named Jank. With the other Samuses in the region, I realize I get bodied. <laughs> like, and I looked, like, even, like, in my online stuff, and I realized I just have, like, a really bad history versus Samus in tournaments. Okay. So I'm like, huh, maybe I don't, like, actually, like, get the matchup that fully. Okay. And I started looking at KJH versus Duck stuff, and I feel like the main reason was I didn't understand Samus as much as a character. Because she's, like, so different to fight against compared to, like, a lot of other characters. Oh, yeah. Um, mainly yeah. because of, like, her bomb stuff and, like, all that. And okay. watch you, it, like... Just, okay, one thing, just to clarify, when you say bomb stuff, you mean recovery? Um, not really just recovery, but, like... So, like, say if I'm fighting Marth, I could hit Marth up in the air, and, like, he's kind of, like, in a bad situation. Samus, like, can kind of just bomb out of stuff, and, like, I kind of have to, like, reset if that makes sense. Like, it's harder to, like, really keep Samus in, like, a super, super bad situation. Like, it's still bad for her, but it's not, like, as bad as, like, Marth, for example. True. Like, she has oh. more combo defense options. She's got her up B. She's got her bomb. She's got her near. Like, she's got pretty floaty physics, so she's usually actionable kind of early, or, like, when she's coming down. Yeah, yeah, that all makes sense. Yeah, and, like, when I, like, look for, like, kills and stuff like that like i kind of realize i kind of do it kind of similarly across the cast like i'll you know i'll combo and then like i'll hit off stage and then like try and get like edge guard you know very simple stuff like that with samus it feels like because she isn't like at super super disadvantage i feel like i like overreach a lot and i felt like i did that versus gumi like i was trying to like edge guard samus when i feel like i shouldn't have like gone off stage at all and also like the shield stuff as well. Like, I feel like I was pushing in spots where, like, where it would have been okay or, like, fine versus other characters. Like, versus Samus, I was just getting, like, blown up. It was, like, reversals. And, like, this was kind of, like, a trend I found, like, practicing versus other Samuses online, like, after that tournament, too. Okay. So I definitely say, like, the KJH and, like, Duck stuff that I looked at was, like, very eye-opening and, like, how to go about, like, changing your, like, game plan around to play other characters. Sure. Yeah, so I find that, like, in I find, yeah, but no, you've tapped on something pretty important. So I generally think that the way that we build playstyles, or generally should be building playstyles, is we want to find something that generally works pretty broadly. Um, but then the real, what we're really doing is we're looking for the exception cases. Um, like, if we can get, get by on our character's fundamentals um, for a particular matchup, um, yeah, like, or maybe we know a couple things about them, but we don't know, like, everything. Usually that's kind of, in my opinion, that's actually kind of preferred. The more we can chunk information across different, like, character archetypes, um, yeah, the more, like, the easier it is to access that information, basically. And the less kind of, like, mental stack it occupies. Because when we have to think of individual things, they actually take up a lot of room, in my, in my opinion. Um, but... And then I think that Samus is, like, one that, yeah, she absolutely has some exception cases because you can't pressure her that as effectively in a traditional set. Like, you can't frame trap her, really, um, in yeah. the way that you can and versus, like, well, almost any other character. Um, yeah, because most other characters don't have, like, invin an upbeat that's invincible on startup, plus, like, the fastest way of dash or shield timing, etc., etc., etc. Um yeah, so if you want to start with Samus, I think that makes perfect sense. So what have you learned so far from looking at uh, the KJH stuff? So the main thing is just, like, how Samus operates as a character. And because he recently posted a video that was uh, Fox Samus. Mm -hmm. And he talked a lot about how, like, a lot of his habits comes from learning how to play against Duck and, like, uh, practicing with Duck and you know, figuring just that matchup out in general mm -hmm. is a very, like, broad thing. But 
um, he opened my eyes about how he like thought about facing other characters. Because for me, I always thought about it as like, okay, I use, I always think about like my character's moves first and how like they might like intercept the character. But he thought about it like, this is like Samus's tools and like, how do I use my tools to like put her in like the worst position, if that makes sense. So I kind of thought about it in a way I was like, I was like using my character to fight through it. And he thought about it more so as like, what are the opponent's like weaknesses first? Gotcha. And I that... thought that was uh, really interesting. Yeah, so let's, let me ask you, uh, do you think you'd be confident in answering uh, what Samus's weaknesses are? Or do you want to take a look at the match and go, kind of build from there? Yeah, so I think Samus's like main weaknesses are is that she can't like super move, like she's slow. Okay. Um, I also think that like her open ups are very like she can't really like open up and neutral as well as like other characters like Fox. Like I feel like I have to look out for like a million things. Like Samus, I feel like I kind of only have to look out for like a few things. If that makes sense. Yeah. But she isn't like doesn't have like crazy burst options and stuff like that. Yeah, like even if now like. Her main way of getting damage in this kind of spot would be with, like, what, her down tilt, her down smash, her grab. That's really just it, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, she's also very stationary. Like, she definitely uses, like, shield in, like, a very interesting way. And there's, like, there's a B. Okay, cool. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. I mean, all of this makes, all of this, everything you're describing kind of, like, makes sense. Um... Already, I can see kind of like some things that we want to be careful about, like that wave shine. Uh, yeah, I think that she can like shield drop Nair on it. I'm pretty sure she can up B on it. So we just have certain things that we want to be mindful of, and then we like Nair into the corner here when she's like crouching. Yeah. I think that's like another big issue with Samus is that like she's more grounded, and like I have a big issue nearing and like aerialing into the corner. But, like, I'm, like, looking for a jump when I'm, like, playing versus, like, a fox or a moth. It, Samus, like, doesn't jump in those spots. Hmm. Like, that's just, like, not what Samus is, like, usually looking for. Like, okay. she's going to be, like, shielding or crouching. And, like, when I play versus, like, foxes who are, like, more antsy, then I get stuff, like, more often. Like, yeah, I'm just going to get reversal. You could be using your down ear. Like, that's, like, a small, like, that's a small thing, but, like... If she's using her crouch a lot, like down air will counter. You no, know, down air will kind of like counter that. The issue I think is also partly though that we're being very direct. You know what I mean? Um, like, do you necess Is it necessary? Is it necessary for you to approach in when she's in the corner? Um. Yeah. No. Not really. Honestly. Yeah. Like I feel like you get so much mu like. You're attacking her. You're attacking her into the corner, into into the corner a lot, um, but I just don't know if it's really like giving. Like it's not really giving you a whole lot when you're successful, and I'm not saying never attack into the corner. Like I really liked how you did that. How you did things there. Um, why do you think I like this play more? Like how you lay, how you kind of like approach with laser and then kind of set up this spacing. Um. Here, I was just kind of, like, waiting to see what Samus was going to do, rather than, like, kind of full sending myself. Because, like, when I full sended and just, like, did an aerial before, I was getting, like, reversaled. Here, I was just kind of, like, waiting to see what she was going to do. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I don't even know if you necessarily need the jab here. But, like, the jab, like, the jab is, like, pretty far spaced. So the only thing that you ever really get clipped with is, like, maybe one hit, like, is maybe a B. But you're still kind of far away from her. Um, aside from that, like you're basically safe from any other kind of counterattack she might do. She wave dashes out with her percent. She probably gets knocked over. Like this all seems pretty good to me. Um, yeah. So that spacing, I think, is is something to keep in mind in general. Um, another. Did KJH go over any of the counterplay to her up B? Um. I'm trying to remember not much, I don't think. It was he was mainly like talking about like his experiences like breaking down the matchup 
with like Fox versus Thanos. And I think the upbeat stuff didn't get mentioned as much. It was mainly like more so how he like went about neutral. If okay. that makes sense. And then I went back and like watched a lot of videos. And okay. it was mainly just like keeping center, I felt, like keeping a strong position and just kind of like like spacing around it. Is at least what I saw. So Yeah, so like this would be an amazing example of the spacing around it, I would say. Like you see how far away from her um you are, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like where do you think her up B hits? Just like kind of right above her. Like I guess like just where she's at. Yeah, exactly. So like her up B is kind of like she turns into a ball and there's like a bunch of like hit boxes around her basically that form like kind of her own, like a ring. And then what she does is this moves up. Like, it moves up in some way, because I think she can turn around with it and stuff. But, like, it basically goes upwards, and then, yeah, like, this is basically the overall, like, where the hitboxes connect. So the reason I'm drawing this is because, like, look at how far away your back air is, right? There's no way that you ever get, like, hit by this thing. Because with once you're, like, the instant that your leg retracts, you're going to, be, like, Falco is basically going to be standing here at the end. Yeah. Um, so with once his leg retracts and you land, like, yeah, you're good. There's no, like, and then what about her other options at her shield? Like, what else can she do, theoretically? Um, I, from what I see, it's usually up B, grab, or, like, wave dash down smash, or, like, wave dash something. Okay. Those are, like, the main things I see. Right, and anything that she does involving a wave dash is going to commit her for at least 13. So whether she goes this way or this way, she still has, like, this way, because of the edge, it's probably cut short. But if she completes it on stage, it's a minimum of 13 frames. And your bear is probably only, like, negative 2, 3, 4 or something like that with how you've done it. So you're very, maybe a little more than that, maybe negative, like, 5. But still, like, you're very, very, very safe. Like, you're at so much advantage if she has to wave dash for um, at her shield. And then her shield grab takes, what, like, a year to come out? Or like yeah <laughs> yeah so we're good we're good on that like we have to basically shield or stand still for her grab so one of the big things i think with um wave dashy care i think it's her grab is actually about 17 18 so we'll just put that there for now i don't know if that's correct but doesn't really it doesn't really matter the thing about wave about characters who have to wave dash out of shield to hit you is that if they have to wave dash out of shield because their immediate options, like this up B, which I believe hits on four or five because of the jump. Yeah, it's four, but then there's like one for the jump cancel. As long as you've taken their immediate out of shield range off the table, so that would be like nares, shield grabs on standard characters, up Bs, things like that. Basically anything that hits immediately where they are out of shield. Um, if you move out of the way of that, you then they then have to spend at least a wave dash in order to get you and this applies to basically any character samus is especially susceptible to this because she doesn't have a shield grab so Makes you can sense. yeah so like this but this applies to ice climbers this applies to peach you can use this versus sheik too um but the idea is basically like the second that you're outside of whatever their immediate count like attacking range is which for samus would be around like here actually she has her nair which hits on like eight so like nair would be about here because it goes like upwards and then she can kind of drift forward or back with it so like this would count so that would be eight and this would also be eight but you see what i mean like once we're outside of that like you know this this kind of like cone area there's nothing that she can really do in order to like press you know in order to like immediately hit us so we're extremely safe just from her in period, which is why this back air is so good. If there's one thing we learn here, it's that this spacing with back air and down air, like if you run over here, jump back with it, um, or even if you just like do it at an angle and then come, like do it in place kind of, or with like a slight angle forward and then like j and dash away after, like those kinds of things are extremely strong. Um, if you do land next to her, do you have any ideas on what you should do, what, on what you could do? Um, if I, if I land, like, right next to her, I guess the main thing is I could probably just, like, laser it or just kind of, like, stay out of that space, because, like, it's going to kind of pressure her. But, like, usually I get, like, very antsy when I'm right next to someone. <clears throat> okay. 
So um, let's look at let's say let's say you've just landed that back here and you're now here. So what could we do instead? Because we go for this forward smash, and I actually don't think the forward smash is that bad. But like what else? Because of like the percent differential, the fact like the percent differential, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like what else could we do here if we wanted to say? Let's say she's at like zero, or at like actually if you went back here at zero. But like let's say she's at like fifty. What else could we do here? Um, I mean, I could like grab and throw maybe, or I could maybe just like move back a bit and just set up lasers. Like I'm just trying to think of like safe stuff that's not like too crazy. I could maybe also just do another back there that's like space. Yeah, I mean, I like I like those. I uh, why, why move back in laser? Like, what are you worried that she's gonna do if you stay here in laser? Um, uh, I could also just stay there in laser. I think the main thing is just like turning around. Usually I like, I'm just thinking about like what I would do and usually like to turn around I do like a dash and then I turn around laser. Okay, so where would you dash? You don't need to do dash very far though, like we're talking like here, right? Like those like, yeah, like those like little small like dash pivot kind of looking lasers. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I can get into that. What if we like, yeah, what if we like jumped forward instead of dashing so we don't burn the dash range? So instead of doing this motion, we did this. Like instead of doing this motion, like where we go up, go forward and jump, what if we did a diagonal, like forward jump and then um, turn around? B reverse thing. That, yeah. yeah, that would also work. Yeah, I just think it's like why why do two movements when you can do one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like little you know little sources of efficiency, but like you know they matter they add up for sure. Um, the other thing I'm curious about is. The other thing I kind of like about this like turnaround laser is that we can, we, we can stay a little closer because we don't necessarily have to go so far. We can maybe do like this kind of angle. Like we maybe can do like this kind of angle. Um, and why do you think staying closer, a little bit closer might be good? Like, because I think you're in a really good spot. Like you're here. I'm thinking instead of going all the way back here, we try to keep like around here, somewhere in this kind of zone. Why do you think that might be? Um... I think it makes it like harder to judge for the Samus where I'm gonna be. Like it kind of opens up more options for me. Like I could choose to like do more stuff, and it's gonna be harder for the Samus to like guess. True. There's that. And I think it also puts more pressure on the Samus because of that to yeah. like maybe want to do something or like choose an option. Mm -hmm. Um. That's like mainly what I'm thinking. So the other thing, the other thing that I'm thinking here is look at how much of her leg is exposed. True. I think I actually catch Gumi with a down tilt at some point, but I'm not sure if it was this or in doubles. <laughs> no, fair. So. No, fair enough. Like, and I think I actually saw you do that, but that's kind of why I'm pointing it out. Like. By doing the laser at this kind of spacing, like if you do the laser in place, because I actually think laser in place is really good here, like just turn around laser. Um, we are keeping so we're keeping close to her. Um, if she wave dashes forward into our laser, that's good for us, right? Um, because yeah. then we get to hit her. Uh, the other cool thing is we can probably just down tilt her, and then like and then like like poke her legs or down smash her. Which is also quite nice. Um, like, we have a lot of power here. I don't think that she can shield grab our down tilt. I'm not totally sure about that one. I think we might be actionable beforehand with how slow hers is, but I don't know 100%. But it might kind of depend, like, when the down tilt hits. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think she's too slow for it, too. I think I could, like, buffer a spot dodge or, like, buffer a roll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, because we just need to get airborne, right? So, uh, again, that's the kind of thing that we can check later, but, like, that's the kind of thing I can trust you to check. But, like, the point is, is that we have a lot of, like, threats here, and she, in order for her to, like, fix her position, she has to move. So I think that, like, yeah, back air here, like, back air, back air here in place makes a ton of sense. Um, the other thing that some people sometimes do here, although I'm not really sure I l how much I love it, sometimes people down air in place. <clears throat> to catch them wave dashing forward. I also really like the idea of lasering here, um, just at like at one of these space at one of these spacings, just because 
probably I and I, I think I favor the more aggressive one just because of how small her shield is. But the point and then yeah, you've also mentioned that uh you could potentially grab, right? Um, do you think you'd grab right away or do you think you'd do like a dash dance or does it depend? It kind of just depends. I, I like mixing and going in right away and like waiting like a B. Mm -hmm. But I think like when I'm like trying to go for an option, like that I immediately think of, I do it right away. And then like I think about mixing up the timing later. Okay. If it's like a new option. Do you think um, that's necessary on Gumi? Uh, for Gumi, I, I don't really think about, like, if it's necessary to, like, super mix up all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think about it like that. I just kind of, like, always try and mix up timing just, like, whenever. I, I don't know. It's not really something I, like, super am conscious about. It's just kind of something that, like, I do. I, I don't know how to explain it. Okay, no worries. I mean, like, again, I'm just thinking that, like, I feel like when we do those little bait, when we do those little feints, um, they also kind of give us information about, like, whether or not they're spot dodging, whether they're holding shield, because we're giving them something to react to. So they give us a little bit more to work with. Um, the trade off is if they just crash full, if they just, like, run full, like, go full steam ahead, um, then. Yeah, then we run into a problem. But the way I view it is, it's kind of like, by being in shield in that spot, she can't really overshoot. You know what I mean? Um, or like, it's very difficult for her to overshoot in general, um, because she's confined to a shield. So if she, if in that kind, with that kind of dynamic, it can be actually really good, in my opinion, to um, bait because her main lines of play are to move back, which would be like kind of a setup for like a whiff punish or hold block, same kind of thing, or to put out like a hitbox, like to undershoot. So if she, because she's confined herself and only doesn't, and doesn't really have like an overshoot option available, I think baiting is just generally very strong there. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. I feel like yeah, what- I, I feel like mm -hmm. really, because like, I noticed that, like, Samus, like, can't move forward, but I never really thought about it, like, in terms of, like, she can't overshoot. Yeah. So that, like, definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and, like, almost any character is like that, right? That's actually one of the things that, that makes Peach so strong, because with her double jump land and her float out of shield forward and, like, hyper float forward, she actually can overshoot out of shield, um, yeah. which is one of her biggest strengths. You can't just, like, turn off your brain when you're pressuring her because she has kind of, like, a full suite of options. Yeah. But not every character is Peach. It's not even ones that are also similarly floaty, survivable, and that look kind of like her. Um, like, <laughs> from a frame... Like, at least from, like, a hurt box configuration. But, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, kind of, a uh, kind of food for thought. I don't, like, I and I, I think that we can both see that there's, like... So this is a spot that people often play in against Samus. I don't know where people got the idea that this is okay, but being above her when she's within one up, when she's within range of a B from you, is like actually a pretty precarious position in my opinion. Like it's not, it's not the most punishing move to get hit by, but it's like you should be ready for. Like this is something that you have to be aware of. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if I like wanted it to land on the platform in the moment but like yeah i definitely don't like being above samus much either if you so, if you find yourself above her what's something you could do that like might make your life easier um probably just light shield um it's kind of hard for me to light shield because my controller has two plugs in it because the board's messed up so i have to use z but Light shielding, I think, is probably, like, the best option or, like, immediate thought. Yeah, the, um, so light shielding is tough because you have to kind of, like, prime it, right? Or, like, you have to go through the grab? Um, you could, no, you could do, like, a down air and then hold Z and it immediately comes up as a light shield. You don't have to grab first. Okay, perfect, so you know about that. Do you also know that if you, if you press A during any action... Um, you can also, like, like if you wave dash and, like, jab, but you jab too early so it doesn't come out, you can also light shield at the end of that. Yeah, I think that's how Moki sets up his, like, blinking shields when he does, like, the edge guard. Yeah. Mars. 
Okay, perfect. So you do, you're do you aware of that. That was really good. So let's look at how, what we did well in this one, because I think that this might be like a good exemplar. So there's that down tilt. I, he wasn't like he wasn't shielding, but that's okay. Love this combo. Love how you're like sharking. You angle the shield down. You go for this, and you see what I mean? Like you wind up trading. Like by that's one of the perks of that back air. Like it it trades well a lot of the time if you don't actually like if it's just like hovering above their shield <clears throat> or like in the spot where they want to up the into. A lot of times, uh, yeah, it can just trade like that. I really also do like the jab to down air choice at the end. Um, that seemed pretty. That seemed pretty good. Did you knew that would work clearly, right? Yeah. Okay. That's like a pretty funny thing I see Salt do a lot versus Marth. She'll like uh, jab and then crouch cancel and do another single jab, and like you can just kind of like stuff bloody players in the air sometimes, which is funny. Nice. So that, that's like something I got from just watching. Sick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salt. Salt's so good with so many characters. It's crazy. Yeah. Her Roy. Her Roy destroyed me at like Fire Sheep's low tier tournament. I was like, oh my god. Oh uh, no. I got six would I was like, oh no. But I think like four of the games were last stock. But like, yeah, two of them she definitely like three stocked me or two stocked me, and I was just like, this is really hard. I don't think she got hit by a single shield drop aerial at all. I was like, she's so fast. How is she so fast? Um, yeah, she's like actually ridiculously fast. Absolutely. So let's talk. Let's talk uh, these. So when she gets hit by this, um, omsa, when she omsa attacks this, uh, what what's your what are you generally looking for? I know you went for down air there. Is that like what you think the is that what you think you should go for, or like is there something else that might be like more straight that might be, yeah, better that we could do. Um. So in that situation, I thought I'd just be fast enough to hit the other down air. Mm -hmm. um, usually, I feel like when playing in friendlies, I wouldn't really go for this. Usually, I'd like set up another laser. Here, I feel like I got greedy. But like, if that's, I think this comes up a lot. Like, I do a lot of bad aerials like during this match specifically. And I'm not sure why I got like stuck in this mindset of like trying to like be fast. I think it's because I, like, misjudged this, and I'm just like, did I actually miss that, or, like, is this, like, actually possible or something, but I'm not sure. I think and you I can, think... I think you can hit this, but I think you have to be, like, already falling. Yeah. Whereas but I, I think it... I think you hit her yeah. near the peak of your jump, basically, or on your way up. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I could probably, like, go for like a shine here or a grab instead of another down air. Like, I think those would be much better, even just like move back laser. I definitely think I should have just shined here, honestly, like a shine back air. What if we what if we down tilt or up tilt? Um, yeah, those are also really good. Uh, probably better than shine, actually. Why better? Uh, why, why would you, I, so for the more first option I want to get rid of um, and let, you know, is move back in laser because I think we've both kind of confirmed this is like definitely a, like this is a something we can combo off of. Um, we just yeah. have to do something faster. So we have grab, we've got laser, no, sorry, we've got grab, we've got down tilt, we've got um, up tilt, we've got shine. Uh, I guess if she's at like higher percents, we can also consider like down smash as an option. Um, but maybe not at 70. So of those, what makes sense to you? Um, shine or up tilt is just like the most like that just makes sense like Falco like hit down air shine up tilt for like hmm. pillar stuff yeah and like yeah especially at, like the mid higher percents like mid to higher stuff and like I think up tilt I like generally prefer it in like these kind of situations because shine sometimes sends like really far so like shine will like send a little bit higher than up tilt so, like, when I hit, like, a back air, like, an aerial afterwards, they're going to be, like, a bit higher up. And sometimes I'd want that, and other times not, because it, like, makes me miss, like, the third aerial or something in the sequence. Sure. But, like, basically, we have, like, we have better combo routes, like, just in general here. Um, we don't have yeah. to. We don't have to go for the down air. Like the other thing I wonder is like, what does the down air realistically get us? Like if if Gumi's holding down anyway, like he probably gets like hit back onto the floor. Um, 
Yeah, we just have to go through, hit like the next conversion with like the up tilt to the um, thing anyway, right? So we were just making more work. I feel like we're making more work for ourselves. Um, we can just kind of take the good okay. things. There we go. This is that spacing we're talking about. You see what I mean? And then it misses completely. And then you hit her out of the air. Why, why Nair? Um, usually like, I like doing full hog nares there because if they hold in, they might get like a down air. But here it is a little strange. Mm hmm. Yeah. With her, with the percent, was there anything else? Was there any merit to like waiting below her and then like looking for something juicier? Um, definitely. I feel like I could like maybe just instead of attacking immediately, I could have like wave dash forward and like look for like up tilt or down tilt or maybe even like a smash attack because she's like landing i could like forward smash i think i just wasn't sure if she was gonna land on the plat or not oh okay that's fair that's fair what if we went for what if we went for forward air then forward air could have been good um i think she also would have went like too horizontally okay but, yeah if uh, maybe i could have snuck into second hit but i don't know it'd be kind of weird in that spot definitely think down air is just like the better choice because she'll be hit into the ground and i'd be on my top flat and from there i could like fall down laser or maybe even like a, i think a back air if like i wanted to send further might have even been better but well she doesn't have a hitbox right now right yeah i could choose anything here shine waveline maybe Oh, yeah, that's probably the best option. Like, double shine. Yeah, because I'm thinking... Shine, think waveland, get another shine. Yeah, I'm thinking we, like, shine, waveland, go here, teeter, and then, like, just wherever like wherever she goes, we go there. Yeah. Or, actually, is the teeter better than the, um... Do you think the teeter is generally better than just the... Uh, taking the waveland so you can have dash jump momentum? I'm, not, I'm never quite sure how that one works. Um, truth be told, I never really look for... Teeter. I kind of just always wave land and kind of watch where they're going to go. Okay. So. True. But, like, basically, so we have, like, the options here. The options in this spot, we can, like, I think that we can wait for her to come down. Like, because we know, because we know he doesn't reach this top platform with how he's done it, um, we know we can, like, wait down here for, like, the forward smash. Like, we've talked about that. Like, just kind of, like, letting her, like, staying on the ground, letting, her, like, hitting her down here somewhere with powerful hit. We also have the option to like shine up here um, and then look for like a vertical kill somewhere up here. Um, and then, yeah, we also have the option of down airing her on. I don't really like this one quite as much, but I think at like a slightly lower percent, I could see it. But like the idea of like down airing her here to like put her onto the floor and then we can come down with like late, you know, with laser after. So we have like kind of like we have a, a, a bunch of options, and then I think if you're right about fair being too low, I think you're right about fair being um per percent being too high. I was actually thinking, what if we like short hop fared her, like because she has to come down like kind of through this area. Oh yeah. So yeah, if we if yeah, we, that could also work. Yeah, we could like we have short hop aerials, so we have like short hop aerial. Um, we have shine up here. We have F smash and stuff down here. So yeah, we have a lot of really powerful options. I feel like this Nair, while it works, I kind of think it's, um, I think we had better things. We, we have other things on the table that we want to consider next time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because he, like, he kind of misses his sweet spot here, which is how that wound up working, but that's okay. I really like how you're doing your back ears in general. My only concern with like the with this reliance on back air is that like I feel like we're making her shield game really good, so I think that we might want to consider going for more down airs, but then it's harder to space those. You know what I mean? Like this, that's kind of the dynamic of what's happening. So yeah, is there, what else could we do instead of down air? Instead of uh, instead of going for down air, um, or could we be just doing the down airs differently? I think doing the down airs differently is one thing. I feel like the only aerials where I'm really good at like drifting back are like nair and back air. Cause I feel like it just like, that's something I do a lot in a lot of matchups. The drift back down air, I never do too much. It's always like a four down air or like one in place. Okay. So I could just practice facing those. Um, another thing is definitely just like looking for more grabs and like shine grabs and stuff. I feel like that 
is like a thing I wasn't doing as much in this match. I was definitely trying to look for that down air and just like not doing them correctly. Mm, okay. Here's a. This is another thing I think that like could that could help too. So when Samus is above you like this, what? Why, uh, why are we going up with this uh, down air? Um, the main thing I think I went for it is because I was hoping maybe we were like far enough left to I could like hit her down and like we're diagonal, but she was yelling in clearly. So I definitely think just landing. I, I realized like I was playing this matchup very much like in the air a lot. Like I'd always like meet her up in the air, try and hit her like immediately with like something. Like that nair. Yeah. I definitely wasn't looking for, like, landing stuff as much. Or anti-air. Like, you could also up tilt her. Like, yeah, if... like, landing up tilt, landing whatever. Yeah, like, if you just land an up tilt there, I feel like that deals with so many of her options. I feel like it's weird doing it versus Samus at first because she's so floaty that it feels like sometimes she's going to get out of it. But the kind of cool thing, like, the cool thing there is that you can kind of, um best of both worlds it by going for say like short hop back here like short hop back here i think is a really good compromise in those kinds of spots uh because it covers above you a little bit more effectively and um yeah the window of opportunity for her to like attack af attack the end lag is just lower like auto cancel back here only has what like eight eight frames of an action um yeah makes sense uh. So Yoshi's story, Yoshi's story, I think, makes a lot of sense as a counter pick. Is it just for, like, the um, low ceiling and stuff? Yeah, I really like playing the stage versus Samus because of just the way the platforms are. It makes it really easy to get double shines and just, like, extensions in general. Mm -hmm. And also there's, like, the gaps in between the platforms. True. Okay. So the thing that's interesting here is like we're going into like when Samus is below us, uh, d is this a good spot for Falco? Like for you to come in at this angle, do you think? Uh, no, <laughs> I think I could get like back air, up beat, um, even like forward air. Okay. I think there's like a lot of options Samus has to like kind of shimmy away, and like even if I hit something, it's probably gonna trade. So that's okay. why I like this early percent. Yeah, so what could we do instead? What would be like something, what was, what could be something like, um, let's assume we're still on the platform. Um, or actually, well, yeah, we'll, we'll assume we're still on the platform. So we're still here. Samus is down there. We'll say she hasn't started her jump yet. Um, what do you think, like, what, what could work here? Uh, first thing that comes to mind is just like drop through laser. Yeah. Um, just uh, drop through anything and just kind of keep that, like, spacing or position. It might be a little close, but mm. I, I kind of like that uh, spacing. Um, another thing is... Hmm. If we're too close, just... could you move back a bit first? Like, how could... If you wanted to move back a bit, how would you do it? Probably, like, dash, shield drop, turn around laser. Can it you... puts a, a little bit hard on Yoshi's, but I definitely think that's possible. Okay, can you do it? Yeah. Okay. I, I really like that. I think that that's like, th that. this is the play that came to mind first. Like, it just kind of cover it, because the thing about Samus is, again, we're using that wave dash principle, right? And so, if she wants to hit us when we're, if she wants to hit us here, with her being here, it's easy for her to walk over and spend a few frames and, like, kick us. But if we're, like, all the way over there, she has to basically dash or wave dash over. And if she dashes, then she's limiting herself to just, like, dash attack and stuff, right? Um, yeah. Which is, if we see her dashing, we know, like, we can come down with, like, back air and stuff or down air instead. Yeah, because... back air. Exactly. But if she wave dashes, then she has access to her down smash or down tilt. But that's, like, when the weakness of her being, like, a very wave dash heavy character comes up because wave dashes have that set, like, 13 frames of an action. Which means that, like, we're in a much... You're, like, trapped in a box. Yeah, kind of, right? Like, so, like, if we had to do Samus's box, where would it be? Um, just kind of, like, a rectangle, I guess. Just around her, from, like, her longest... Well... Like, here? I guess I could also consider, yeah. Maybe a little longer because of the down smash, but, like, I feel like after a wave dash, we could still kind of see it. So, like, around here, basically. Yeah, kinda. yeah around there. Maybe a little further, but like, 
probably not too much further. Maybe like your most. So you, yeah. So you now so like if this is the Samus box, like if this is where like what her box occupies, you can see why I like this. Pl Do you see why I'm like kind of liking your uh, suggestion for shield drop, um, for shield drop laser so much? Yeah. Because yeah, we're just getting uh, we're staying outside the box. Yeah, outside of that uh, danger zone. Yeah. And I mean, like, we don't always have to stay outside the danger zone. We are Falco. We've got good moves, too. But at the same time, if we can avoid it, especially in early game when we're on match point, probably not a bad idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that, like, this is kind of like her box. And it, obviously it would be mirrored, like, it would go both ways. But, like, I think for us, we're really mainly, like, worried about the part that's, like, over here. Um, what about her aerials? And I guess her aerials are kind of like a blob above her, kind of, and like a little bit to the side. Like, this would be kind of like where her back air hits. And yeah. then her up B is like a little bit higher, like maybe around here. Yeah. Cool. I definitely think the biggest aerial to look at here is just back air. Cool. So, like, this would be like something that, an area that she con controls pretty hard. And then I think that, like, same idea here. Like, she's got her aerial, like, she's got her down smash and stuff that's like powerful control and she's got her forward tilt and stuff over here so but she doesn't really have anything in this like middle zone does she like around here until she gets like to the end of her wave dash over here like she's not really that mobile so i think we're starting to see where her like where the limits of her range are like and why it's good to come in at some of the angles you're coming in at like it's really kind of like the pathway's kind of like here isn't it yeah that makes sense yeah, because, like, when you're generally successful approaching her, and when you see KJH and stuff approach her, it's kind of like this area that they're aiming for. Or if she's, like, facing us, like, let's, like, if we pretend that she's facing, if she's, like, if she's facing towards us, yeah, it's, like, not, she doesn't really have anything in this spot, it's just everything else, it's just everything kind of around it. So then that's why she kind of, like, moves back so much, and why she holds her ground so much, because a lot of times she just doesn't have an option to throw at you if you come in at standard approach angles. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so this is another kind of thing, a kind of food for thought thing. This might be like a good thing to keep in mind as well for like wh why she might go for dash attacks. Because remember, like if this is kind of like the space that she controls well in general, there's a little bit further out here, like about here is where her dash attack would hit, right? Like around this area. Yeah. So it's not so much something about Samus that people get wrong. I think is that her da is like being worried about her dash attack. It's not her so much that her dash attack is a good move. It's just that it's good on her, um, because it just happens to extend further past like the range of control um, that her other moves have. But it's just it, it just occupies that like perfect middle ground territory that makes it a good call, like kind of like a good call out for people who are like hanging outside her forward tilt. Um, it's also part of why Sheik's accidental forward smash always seems to work. Because it's just... <laughs> no, but actually, like, right? Because like, you're yeah. just hanging outside I, her... I for... Yeah, so... If you've ever wondered how Sheik's accidental forward smash just seems like the best move in the game when she does it, but if you try to use it intentionally, it never works, there you go. Because <laughs> it's just... Yeah. That's really funny. That, that, that makes total sense. Mm-hmm. It's also why Peach's like I think it's part of why Peach's accidental forward tilt is so good, because it's just you're like jumping like you're do you're jumping around her or something to try to like deal with her like you know to try to deal with her and then she's just like because you want to deal with her dash attack or down smash and then suddenly anti air and it's like okay, yeah <laughs> and she's like one hundred percent intentional every time. <laughs> yeah, being hit by those moves also always feel the same. You're like kind of hovering in these spots where you feel like nothing's gonna happen, and then something ha like that happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what 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 was this? Uh, I think I'm not sure if I missed my jump or I didn't have a jump. I think I just straight up missed the button. I think you actually shield got started your platform drop, and then you double jump. Let's see, because I didn't see the ring. Yeah, I don't see the ring here. So I think I just, like, misinputted. Yeah, I think you're right. <clears throat> yeah, I think we're There's getting... I think we're getting uh, antsy like here. here. 
Yeah, I'm getting nervous to Nancy. So that's a good kill. At least you haven't honestly, at least you haven't lost the ability to kill. That's like the worst the, the worst thing in tournament is when you've lost as long as you have the ability to kill, my opinion is you can kill. Oh, back. this is sick by uh Doomy. Like when I got hit by this, I told him that it was sick. <laughs> Cause like I feel like I just got hit with everything and then just died. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think um, the, I think the thing that's most impressive to me here, like other than the use, there's two things that really stand out to me here. There's using the back end of the down smash here to cover no to cover the roll behind. I think that was like sick. Um, and then it's the way that he deals with the reflected laser. No, the reflected missile, to like shoot yeah. to like break it then still grab the edge. Like, I thought that was, like, such a good way to refresh invincibility and also deal with the incoming threat back his way. Yeah, you see, like, after I get hit by that, like, I kind of, like, laugh, like, afterwards. And then he, you know, it's just really, uh, really funny. Do you normally take games from him? <clears throat> um, in friendlies, I feel like I take most games. And then in tournament, I, like, just lose. Both times I played him in tournament, it's been game three and then... He edges me out. Okay. So, let me ask you. Why are we going for up air here? Um, straight up, I thought it would kill. And I think he would... I, I think this was just, like, a misjudge kind of thing. Cool. Fair enough. So. Moving on, then. Because, yeah, like, yeah. we... Like, clearly we have to shine... Clearly we have to get the shine there. But, like, yeah, if, you, if you're aware of it, I'm totally fine with us just moving on with this. And I guess that was a, okay, nice DI mix-up. Love that, love that. Um, honestly, like, yeah, like, you've had two kind of, unfo well, you've had, like, one definitely unfortunate kill. I feel like this should be, I feel like, not should, but, like, I feel like this is not, this is um, deceptively close. Or has potential, or had potential to be decept to be much closer. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you really had that one, like, kind of SD where you just missed, like, the thing. I love that up smash. I normally don't like Falco up smash, but I really... So we got laser into down tilt. It's like, yo, this is good. Was this going to last stock? Uh, yes. But I, like, immediately die after I get the second one, so... You're playing really... Like, I really... This stock is basically, like, what I think Falco... Like, a big part of what I think Falco should do. So, like, here... So you get back on stage here, you laser, you kind of go for this grab, that's love that, because uh, you anti-air him, you anti-air him out of that. The, now, let's talk about this bomb, because you mentioned bombs earlier. So what do you think this bomb is doing realistically? Like, what's a, what's, a, what's the problem with this bomb? Like, why why are we worried about it? Um, It, like, cuts me off from, like, jumping and hitting here, like, exactly like this. And, like, I think I could have still maybe traded got a back air but like i feel like i love going for full hops a lot so i also get hit by it a ton okay um where does samus I always come think out of, of this it bomb? As like a wall where does samus come out of this though like now that she's done it here where does she go <laughs> uh, excuse me um she got she could go like left or right but she's like going away from me usually okay so she goes like what here um, yeah, kind of, like, well, she could also, like, pop up a bit and then, like, just go to the right or left, but usually, like, away. Okay, so she can, she does have air mobility, right, like, she can move in different directions, but she can't go up until this thing explodes or she does another one, right? Yeah. Do you know? Okay, cool. So let's, like, let's do, let's do something fun here. Let's see how long it takes for her to come out of this bomb. Oh, wow. I think she's actionable now. I actually did not know that. <laughs> I didn't realize she was, like, not that actionable out of the bombs. Uh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, something, yeah. Um, because I don't want to belabor this point, but let's go to, like, let's go to my, the frame data repository that we're seeing a friend of mine built have been doing have been working on because we got we got animations how long do you think samus's bomb animation is if you had to take a guess um 
I am honestly not sure. Like, I, I always thought it was, like, half a second, like, 30 frames or something. Mm-hmm. So do you think, after seeing that, do you think it's longer? Or sh- um, I, it's definitely longer. It is. So. Oh, it's like a full second. I believe she is technically considered actionable on 49. Wow. Yeah, I or always thought it was more actionable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Fair enough. But yeah, this move is a lot more punish is a lot laggier than people think it is. Um, just generally speaking, because like I think she's actionable here or here. Um, like there isn't like yeah, because she's in like yeah, it's it's one of the two. Um, so what we can see here is it's not that like if we go back to our diagram. It's not that she's, like, actionable here. It's actionable... It's that she's actionable all the way down, like, here. Or wow. over here. Or over here. Or if she la- she has to land here. Like, she has to go... Like, basically, if, if with, at this height, she has to, like, finish on a surface. Right? Interesting. Which yeah. then means that you can interact with that. So we don't have to full hop up here. We can just attack this area... Or we can wait for her to land there and then hit her with whatever. Interesting. Yeah, no, I never knew that. <laughs> I just always thought, like, she just hovers in the air and then, like, she just gets out of it. I guess I just always got hit by the bomb. <laughs> so I just I just never really noticed. It's just really funny. Yeah, and I mean, like, the bomb is here. So, like, it explodes around here, right? So we don't have... We know not... Like, this is the danger zone. Like, this is, like, the no-no zone. But... In order for her to use it, like, even if this is the no-no zone, and even if she stay, like, hangs out near it, right, um, and gets the jump, the bomb hop, like, we have so many ways of attacking that. Like, we can just head here and come up with back air. Like, we can short hop up air. Like, we've got tons of ways to, like, hit her. So I think the big thing to remember is, like, 49 for bomb. Yeah. So, yeah, like, because the difference between... The difference between, like, something taking, like, half a second versus, like, you know, a full second, that's huge. Um, yeah. So we don't have to we don't have to be worried by these bombs. These They do nothing. Okay, they don't do nothing, but, like, she needs a lot more height than this for them to do something. We'll put it that way. Yeah. That makes sense. So then, like, we have this amazing, pers- like, we have this amazing play. Because I think that this is just so savvy, like the choice of down tilt, hitting her back onto the platform. You're spacing again. You're you're still spacing. Uh, this is actually, by the way, this kind of laser, like the ones that you've been doing on this stock, those are absolutely a viable option for doing your low percent, quote unquote, aerials. Um, because if she's gonna hang back and look for shield and crouch cancel anyway, there's nothing wrong with just taking like ground moves, right? Um, yeah. Like going for laser into like down tilt, going for um, going for laser into into grabs, um, just staying outside of her up B range. Uh, you can also kind of like down air in front of her in case she wave dashes, um, and then fade in at the end into sh- and go into shield. That's also kind of good. Um, yeah, lots of options. Like you don't have to treat it like you're doing the down air really far back. You can also move into her with it. Um, if we do that, we treat it more of like a um, frame trap, but we don't. Tr- but we don't frame. It's more like a frame trap in the sense that like, um, it's kind of like how people call out DPS in um, other fighter game in, in in other fighting games where they like do like kind of like tap somebody and then block. Um, or yeah. ha- or if you've ever pressured Bowser in your life, like if you ever fought a Bowser player and you've let you're like okay low aerial block, same idea here. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that makes sense. But I think that this will help you against character against opponents who. I, this is not just applicable to Samus though, because I think that's one of the traps to fall into. Like it's just like, oh yeah, this is only Samus. It's really anyone who has a really good counter attack out of shield, or anyone who's really really trigger happy, out of shield. Yeah. Um, I definitely can see the applications for like a Sheik who like nares out of shield a bunch. <laughs> And yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, Peach, and maybe in the Falco Ditto too, because like Falcos like definitely like to try to like force counter hit with Shine. Um, yeah, yeah. Like the big thing here is, just because it works on Samus doesn't mean it's Samus specific. 
Um, a lot of the basic ideas that, that we're looking at here can absolutely translate elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I think that overall, like you, I overall, uh, I think you played this. You had like that last stock was really really good. I like if there's one takeaway, like if there's one stock you watch back for ideas, I would say that is like a really really good one because everything when you took his third stock in that Yoshi's game was just like. Yeah, I loved it. I love it because you can also see, I think, a lot of the same ideas that like you that that um, KGH was talking about, um, and I think that's really good. Like this was this was great play. In my Thank opinion. you. Yeah. So, what do you need? For, like, um, do you have any questions for me? Any last things you want to go over? Like, how did this go for you? Like, yeah, I just want to know. I want to know it all. <laughs> um. Yeah, definitely just the Samus thing. I feel like in tournament, compared to friendlies, it was definitely like I'd get nervous a bunch and kind of play into her zones. And now I kind of like, now that I understand the zones a lot more, and I'm going to be looking into like just trying to play more around her zones better and like really like think about that. I think, um, I think this is going to help me a ton, especially versus just, like, people who are more stationary in general. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that knowledge, especially the bomb thing, because I just straight up thought she was so much better out of it. You know, um, it's it's funny, but, like, it's funny the things that we, like, learn about these moves by just, like, looking them up sometimes, you know? I, I would yeah. be curious... To like something that might be fun. What what's it? What are some other problem moves that you find that like stop you from having confidence in certain positions when you play against like other characters? Like, what are some other moves that like are just kind of like troublesome for you? Um, trying to think. I feel like I get hit by Sheik's aerial needles a bunch, but I feel like that's because like I want to move back and then I just get sniped, <laughs> and then she just like moves forward. Mm. Um, trying to think of other moves I get hit by a ton. Sometimes I get hit by lots of random S smashes by Mars. Okay. But like, like, uh, like some games that like immediately start where they j like say on Battlefield like Salsa versus Mars. Mars will just like run off that uh, forward air F smash like immediately, and I like never expect that opening. Um. Trying to think. Falcon stomps sometimes, but that's about it. Like at least in like the immediate ones I could think of off the top of my head. Sure. Like I'm... Falcon stomp, the chic needles, and then like <laughs> the random S smashes. Honestly, like I feel like we learned a lot about Samus's bomb and how it works just by taking a look at like some frame data by taking a teensy look at some frame data and understanding that it's like a, actually a lot laggier than we thought it was. Um, I'm not saying you have to do it with those moves because those moves are pretty common enough. Um, and they're the, I, I don't think that like the lab should be an, an, um, a replacement for experience because experience is like a very good teacher in general. But if yeah. you still find yourself getting stumped on those moves or other moves, I would be really surprised. I would. I wonder what what kinds of things we could learn from just taking a look at the at how the move works a little bit, because I feel like yeah, we learned so like we learned a lot about like we cleaned we clarified a lot of understanding about um a position versus Samus that comes up pretty regularly when you play against her, um pretty quickly. And now I think going forward, you're not going to really have those same issues versus her. You no, know, when you're juggling her or dealing with her free fall, and I just kind of wonder like. Uh, if we applied a similar thing to other moves that come up that are kind of troublesome, actually, I hmm. now that I think about it, this like this is a very similar thing with Fox will hop Nair. So like I would always try and back air Fox's Nair, and I'd always get hit, and I was always really confused until I learned that Falco's head actually is like poking up above his head. Like his back air is like very horizontal and like lower than I thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's kind of reminding me of that now that I think about it. Like, I had no idea that, like, Falco's back air didn't, like, protect his head like that. So I'm like, why am I always, like, just losing or, like, always getting hit? And, like, it wasn't until I learned that that I, like, actually started playing the, those situations differently. Yeah. 
So if there's something that's not clicking, it might be worthwhile to investigate why. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you saying that just reminded me of that situation. But that's, like, one of the only few times that I really, like, looked into something like that. Hmm. Well, okay, I mean, yeah, that I, makes sense. I bet you got a lot better after looking into that thing versus Fox, though. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I, like... I like doing like that back laser or just like trying to just go older up tilt now. And just because back air just was not working. Yeah. And I bet like when you when back air is going to work, you're a lot better at recognizing it because you can understand I, I, it has to be in a spot where my head is not exposed. Yeah. And cool. they aren't like really above me. Yeah. They have to be more to your side, like at a diagonal or something. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely need to. I definitely think looking at just like how stuff is spaced is like how I understand stuff a lot better. And I never really think about like lag too much. I kind of just like visually see, usually. And yeah, I just straight up miss the bomb thing. I mean, hey, it is what it is. I don't want you to beat yourself up over the bomb thing. But yeah, I, I just hope that we can recognize this as kind of like a learning opportunity in a way that we can maybe use existing resources more effectively to serve you. Because, yeah. really, that's how we get better. Yeah. Um, um, I definitely want to talk about the low match uh, sometime later, too. Um, but maybe I could get like another match that might be like more better <laughs> or something. So what I... Later what I on, because I... Well, I've got a couple yeah. of minutes. Like, so let's talk about let let's talk about Loam. So, what 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 do you what happened? You said that um, it was after the SD that things kind of went sideways, right? Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. So when did that happen? Thought, which set? Which game? Uh, game one. I think it was stock. Like two or three on mine. Okay. Um, somewhere around there. I'm on the ledge and I have them edge guarded, and. I didn't Firefox refresh, and I was going to go down for a down air, but because I didn't refresh, I get hit and then just die at, like, a really early percent, and that kind of just, like, stuck in my head, and then I lost the game, and then after that happened, I was just sort of frustrated, <laughs> like, the entire set, because I'm just like, man, if I had gotten that, then, like, this entire thing would have been different, because, like, the game was really close. And uh, Lum played really great, too. Um, but it was just that main thing where it's like, dang, it just really felt like I threw this away when we were having, like, such a great match. Gotcha. Okay. So let's see here. Where does this happen? Oh, it's probably... Okay, so it'll probably be this one, I'm guessing. So what happened? So... Ah. Yeah, right here. Gotcha. Ooh, I see it. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it that you didn't okay. go for the refresh, or is it that you grabbed the edge kind of like you know kind of late, or kind of um, early? Kinda I'd have early. To, I'd have to see it again and see. Yeah. So like you grab like this is kind of the situation, and then you grab the edge here. I guess like with cliff weight, I feel like this is tight. Like this is really tight. Yeah, I think I just grab it at like a wrong time because i was just kind of going off of memory but yeah i think this now that i'm looking at it it definitely seems like i just grabbed it at like a weird time yeah could you definitely still early. could you still make this work though um yeah i'm sure i can i just have to drop down like now and then down air to get my down air out i think um do you have to no, I think I could uh, maybe just do an attack off a ledge, like a ledge attack. Um, where does it? Where does those up B go? Like here? Uh, he could only really go like straight up or like a little to the right. So yeah, so like you probably straight up. so like basically here, right? Like it finishes here. Yeah. What if you like? What if when he comes up, you go above it? So like you go up here. 
and then you fast. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And then, yeah, fast fall in on him with down air because your down air hits at an angle, right? Like it hits like this way. Yeah. So then, yeah, he's dead, right? Yeah, I always. Yeah, I never really think to do that when they're below me. I think of like doing that with back air when they're like way to the right of me, just to like cover the space above. But I never think of like doing it when they're below me. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense, though. Like, I always, like, drop from ledge and then do, like, a rising aerial. But yeah. just, like, doing, like, a high aerial yeah. is really interesting. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, I think that makes sense. Um, I think that makes sense. But, like, I think that using your double jump to, like, out Like, using your double jump to kind of move around someone's recovery. I think that's a line of play that, definitely, that I definitely recommend looking at. In terms of mentally resetting, though, like, I know that I... Trust me. I know salt. Um, and I definitely know what it's like to be like, to just have that, oh, if only things were like a little bit different, like I get that. But, yeah. um, I mean, at the same time, I'm sure he's made some pretty costly mistakes. Like, I'm sure that he's made some pretty, you know, a bunch of mistakes this set too, right? Yeah. And maybe they weren't as obviously uh, like costly as that one, but like surely you got you know he you, some of them led to maybe like a death combo or like him getting like hit really hard, right? Yeah. So I guess my question would be is why is why are, why is ours were um, notable but his isn't? Um. Is it because it's I think not just as like obvious? in the yeah. I think there's that, and definitely just, uh, yeah, just in the heat of the moment, I'm thinking more so, like, uh, my own game <laughs> kind of thing. That's okay. That's a very human reaction. But you and I know better. So what's, yeah. a, so how, what's something, like, so when we're feeling that moment, because we've, we've kind of gone over, like, how we have to approach this to, like, bring ourselves back. We, it starts with acknowledging. So did we acknowledge? Yeah. What did we acknowledge? Acknowledge. Uh, acknowledge that, like, uh, you know, he could also, like, make those mistakes and stuff, too. No, no, no. It starts with how we're feeling. So in that moment, how oh, are you feeling? Oh, how we're feeling, how we're feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm feeling very, like, in my own head and very mad <laughs> that that happened to me. Yeah. So we start with, I'm feeling mad. I feel cheated. And then we, like, I feel like I've, I feel, I've, I'm upset. I, I feel angry. I feel like I've been cheated out of this stock and I should have had it, but I also don't know that I would have had it because like, I don't like, maybe I would have had that stock, but like, that doesn't mean I, I win. That doesn't mean I win the set either. So I think, yeah. Okay. So it's about. We, we have to like we have to be keep it into we have to keep I think the in like it's okay to acknowledge that we are feeling kind of like not great about what happened and that it what and it did suck and we probably would have gotten that kill but we have to keep it isolated to that we have to keep it like from spiraling out of control um and I think the best way to do that is to just be real with it uh, we don't let it like expand and grow out of control and reach the and then reach other things. Um, yeah, we just uh, yeah we allow like we keep it within we keep it in like kind of we allow it to do its thing in the context of that single stock like we feel that but then we when then we use that to bring ourselves back because once we acknowledge it like the feeling the fact that we're upset it's usually easy for us to then like kind of pivot elsewhere once we do the breathing and stuff. But if we try yeah. to pretend it's not there, then that's when things backfire. Um, like that's when we wind up holding on to things for longer than we need than they're useful for. Um, do you see what I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. On a scale of one yeah. to ten, how how confident do you think you'd be like applying that in your next tournament? Um, I think recognizing that I'm upset is probably the easier <laughs> the easiest part. Mm -hmm. Um. Trying to keep it confined, I feel, is, like, really hard. Because I'm not really sure how to, like, frame it in my mind. Because, like, I'll be like, okay, that happened. And then, like, I lose the game right afterwards. Then I feel like I'm going to, like, probably beat myself up that I lost the game. Mm -hmm. 
or at least try and like suppress those feelings if that makes sense gotcha so i'm not really mm -hmm. yeah so i i definitely see like that's like how to, to do it but i'm not really sure like ways to do it if that makes sense so same way that we did it last time remember we take a deep breath we acknowledge what we're feeling so this time it would be i'm angry because i yeah. wanted to win that game and oh I... okay okay that makes a lot more sense yeah. and then it goes or like i wanted to take that stock and i had him but mistake like you know things happen i'm not out of it yet we'll see what happens okay. next Okay, sa same way as uh, the anxiety. That, that's what wasn't clicking for me. <laughs> yeah, for it's a the same. It's you know what we deal with. The feelings matchups are honestly not that different from each other. They're all basically the same, because all of them want the same thing at the end of the day. They all want to just be heard. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know we don't have enough time to watch this full thing. But are you gonna? How on a scale of one to ten, how are you feeling um, about being able to? Since this is really just the anxiety, but a little spicier, um, how are you feeling about your odds of being able to apply this? I definitely now that I like get it a bit more. Um, now, now I'm a lot more confident now. Good. I'm gonna let you go for now, but this was great. I'm I I at least I found it great. Um, and I want to hear uh, if you, if this, if you get upset, if you get angry for whatever reason, or like something, or if this flares up at any other tournament, like in the near future, please let me know, um, afterwards and tell me how you handled it. Okay. Cause yeah, I want to, I like hearing about how y'all are succeeding. So, um, okay. yeah. and I have, I have total faith in you on this. Thank you. All yeah. Right. I'm definitely excited to play and to practice like, uh, just doing like shield stuff and like thinking about the uh just kind of like the zones and the blocks because like thinking like wave dashes as like boxes people are locked into like mm -hmm. i knew like people were in lag but to think of it as like a big like rectangle i never really thought yeah honestly like once you start seeing the lines in the game that's when it's over because that you'll start seeing them you won't be able to stop seeing them um yeah that I, makes sense yeah like it's a uh, I feel like that's what a lot of high level players see. Like maybe it's not boxes. Like I find boxes easy to work with. So that's my kind of mental representation. But other pe I've heard other people describe it as blobs. Um, other people it, they just kind of like intuitively get, and they can kind of like point to like the important features. But yeah, like once you start understanding kind of the hidden systems that are there, but not really immediately obvious. Yeah, the game's super fun. I think you're gonna really enjoy working on this stuff. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to work on it too. Perfect. Saren, it's been wonderful. I'm going to let you go, but we'll talk soon. And yeah, keep up the great work. I really, I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> again. Um, it's my All pleasure. This is great. My pleasure. Bye for now. Goodbye.